There is an odd and haunting contrast there, the simple, soulful sounds from a piano and a lone voice amid the ugliness of the destruction of war. Somehow, it seems, the music brings calm where there has been chaos, civility where there was once brutality. And for a year now, Slava Vakarchuk has traded sold-out stadiums for solo impromptu performances. Almost everywhere Putin's forces have laid waste, Vakarchuk has been there too. Lieutenant Vakarchuk has brought the light of music to some of the darkest corners of this conflict, and along the way, lifting the morale of a nation at war. This was life in Ukraine before the war. It's a warm June summer's night, and one of the country's most popular singers, Hilava Vakachak, is performing to a full house. Tens of thousands crammed into Kiev's Olympic Stadium, barely enough room to swing their arms in the air. But then came the Russians. For the past year, Vladimir Putin's troops have laid waste to Ukrainian towns and cities in what Putin himself has strongly implied is war against all things Ukrainian, their culture, traditions and law, their art and music. And that's when Slava Vakachuk drew a line in the sand, promising himself he would never be silenced and neither would Ukrainian music. When you get there, you feel surreal because it is surreal. But once you start doing music, you know, music makes it, make it, makes it feel as usual because music is so, such a powerful tool. So you just close your eyes and you just, you know, you're always almost there. But then you open your eyes and you understand that it's not a usual day, not a usual performance and, and you're sitting around these debris and it's horrific, yes. No Ukrainian performer comes close to Vakachuk in terms of longevity and popularity. He's been compared to Bruce Springsteen or Paul McCartney. But when he enrolled to serve in the home defense, think Elvis and the GI Blues. But Ukraine needed more than another foot soldier on the front line, so Vakachuk set out on a one-man mission, traveling across the country, stopping at trenches and foxholes, schools and hospitals, refugee centers, anywhere he saw an audience. And there, he would perform. And at last count, there had been 175 performances. I went to see the troops. I uh, got to understand that uh, these people need something more than just, you know, ammunition. So I think that what I am giving to them and many other, you know, musicians and, and poets and others, it's an ammunition for their hearts. And that's what warriors also need. It, it seems what, you, what you're giving them also is a reminder, you know, of all the things that are worth living for, but also what it means to be Ukrainian as well, because these are Ukrainian songs, this is in their language, and you know, this is important, this is why, they're, they're, in a fight for survival, you need to know about these things, you need to be reminded. I think what we do with the songs, with being there, not even performing, uh, just, just, you know, sometimes just smiling to them, joking, hugging, uh, you know, how many times I was asked by these soldiers, uh, just, uh, they were giving me their phones and, and, tr and asked me to shoot a video for their beloved, for their mothers, for their kids, and just saying, uh, to, to just they wanted me to say that everything would be all right. And I was saying that because I really convinced that everything's gonna be all right sooner or later. He traveled to Bucha to see for himself atrocities committed by Russian soldiers. A difficult and at times painful journey, which he shared on social media. I'm in Bucha, near Kiev. You certainly have heard of it. And on the back of me, behind me, you can see destroyed buildings. They were destroyed by the Russian tanks, Russian missiles, airstrikes, and soldiers. 
This was a story that was well documented, it was well covered by the press. So why did you go there? What need did you have to fill to, to go there and to see it and to report on it, if you like, for, you know, for, for your followers on social media? So it was important for me to see it with my own eyes. But then I also understand that because uh, I have a voice that may be heard by uh, many others, pe uh, other people, so I need to tell this story and I, I become a sort of a storyteller and a sort of a journalist or reporter uh, as th the same way as you become a soldier. So you j just need to spread a word around the world about what's going on. So I, I, felt, I felt obliged and I did it not only in Bucha but in many other places. The reality of war seemed to strike with a gut punch in Haniv, a soccer stadium where he performed regularly with his band, hit by airstrikes. And you can see what's, what's happening there now. Uh, right in the middle is the big hole, probably three or four meters depth. Uh, also a hole from air bomb. And my question is to everybody who is, who is looking at that, uh, were these library or stadium military objects, did they impose any threat to so-called military operation of Russians? Uh, I think certainly no. He performed for those defending the defunct nuclear power plant at Chernobyl. And he was regularly on CNN to call out Russian atrocities as he found them. Here he is in Kharkiv. I don't need to tell anything about this background, right? On the back of me is the building of uh, uh, one of the, of the buildings of Kharkiv State University, one of the oldest in Eastern Europe. So I don't know if it was a military object, but it was, I'm sure not, but it was uh, brutally ruined by Russian bomb. Lieutenant Velichuk, who at 45 made it through boot camp and basic training, this is no grand gesture. His service to country, he says, is no more than that of most Ukrainians. Sometimes the word duty, which in English is, is also only four letters, it's so simple, but it's so profound. And this is what duty is about. It's not just, uh, you know, some philosophical word or some, just, just a word of honor. It's a very practical thing, duty, because if you don't do it, then others won't do it. That's how this, the nation resists and win the war. <laughs> This past August, Vakachak and his band toured Europe, raising money for Ukrainian hospitals, children, as well as refugees. They went on to share a stage with Coldplay, and yes, the world was listening. What we're doing around the world, we're trying to be also on the front line, a front, a front line on the trenches, uh, where we fighting for the minds of, of people in the world. We want these minds to understand what's really going on. And I try to do it with my music, with my arts. And I think rock and roll does a, a great thing, uh, uniting people, uniting people. And uh, these venues, these concerts can bring a lot of, you know, emotion that is needed now. And very quickly, you will... By the way, on my, on, on behind, behind me, I hear the anthem of Ukraine playing now. <laughs> it's just very symbolic. Yeah, good timing. Slava, thank you so much for speaking with us. I wish you all the very, very best for what you do. Thank please, you. Please stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. And please uh, don't stop talking about Ukraine and spreading word about Ukraine. And we are all together. Thanks a lot. You got it. Thank you. Slava Ukraini. And please watch our half hour of music that makes a difference special Saturday at 9.30am in Kyiv, that's 7.30pm in Sydney.